Well, at this point, I pretty much just want to see... I want to see... I want to see Anir and Sandag versus Golden and King's Death. Uh, actually... Hmm. Fire Dragons versus Swordtail and Google Frog does seem like it'd be the match. Like, Anir and Sandag versus Golda and Kingstead. Mm, that's a top match. But we're also going on to a bracket match. Hmm. Four hundred icons. Like the the outcome of four hundred icons versus Tortell and Google Frog is a big deal. Just trying to think of how that's gonna work though, because that like that's a big deal. But man, I hmm. No, let's go with that. Let's go with the one that determines fourth place. Or partially determines fourth place. We'll get plenty of chances to see Golda, Kingstad, Anir, and Saniac play in the bracket stage. They are guaranteed bracket stage. That's not a problem. What might be a problem is what happens afterwards, but for now, no, it's fine. But yeah, Sorthel and Google Frog versus Four Island Icons. We might not see Sorthel and Google Frog after this. We might end up just seeing Four Island Icons moving forward, and really, Four Island Icons will move forward no matter what. Like they have this. So really, this is the only match with stakes. Tech Omni and Mini Shadowstorm can't really scrape their way back in at this point. One and four won't be enough. Mackie and Ophelius, if they win, they'd be two and three, and that would be enough to get Tiebreaker. Unless Sorthel and Google Frog lose theirs, which they'd be one and four. At which point, the top four are solidly picked. But, yeah, this is going to be tricky, though. This is a new map. Not a lot of people are familiar with this map. Anything could happen. Could be a lot of upsets. I think by ELO rating, I'd give Sortel and Google Frog the favorite status. But, as a team, I don't know. Compared to 400 and Icons, who have been doing quite well thus far. I mean, they... Who are they winning against? They won against... They won against, okay, the Tech Omni and Mini Shadow Storm, they won against them. They won against Mackie and Orphelius, who just beat Sortel and Google Frog. So that's the thing. That was a hard won battle that I don't think necessarily. Like, that was more of a matter of knowing how to deal with that one situation in that map. I don't know if it would have been a best of three, it would have been a win for Mackie and Orphelius. It would be kind of cool, because that would mean Orphelius' practice has really paid off. But I don't know. We really can't know. Anyway, with that, we do have the match starting, and this is Thornhill Crossing. So, it's got a few little, actually really nice little sections here. They're just raised bits of land, essentially raised constructions. Two of them are your starting bases. Actually, I don't know how big this is. I don't have a sense of scale here, but it looks like it's actually a fairly small map. So yeah, northeast and southwest are the starting bases. While, at the same time, northwest and southeast... Wait, what? How in the... What? Oh, did start boxes get broken? How are Google Frog and Swartail's commanders here? I am so confused. Okay, well... Whichever, I don't understand why this is happening... Whatever. I, it's strange. I don't know why we're spectators are seeing southwest and northeast, but okay. <sighs> but yeah, Thornhill Crossing is not a map I've seen before. And it looks it looks pretty nice. It doesn't have a whole lot of fancy effects on it, mind you. Yeah, not really specular or anything. I mean, it's a thing that has been applied to a lot of maps these days, is specularity and so forth. But that's not what we're seeing here. And also a clear confusion of how this is working. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> okay, good. I'm not the only one seeing the start box as being weird. So yeah, I don't know. This is bizarre. But anyway, 400 icons. Not sure what they're going to start with. We do see Hovercraft coming out from Sortail. So that's going to be 
that's going to be interesting. Swordtail going for that, likely because I'm not sure if the rivers are shallow enough to cross, which I do believe they are. Oops. Yeah, they're totally crossable. Not sure about for vehicles, but that's irrelevant. We have Air and Hover from Swordtail and Google Frog, while Icons and 400 400 going for Hovercraft as well. Icons yet to choose what to build. Going for Amphbot. Interesting. Well, in, that, in this case, the water is irrelevant. All sides are completely bypassing it. However, at this point, with the setup they have, I mean, Amph does have the archers. They're very or anglers, rather. They're very strong anti-air. And against the darts, not the darts, the daggers, well, a maze has already been built. So, West North, I, is this like Battle for West North reference map? I'm curious if the Southeast team is normally named if it's not named Southeast. But yeah, the Northwest team, they do have... They got something. They have Amph, they have Ducks, they have, they have their Raiders, they have their Riots. They can stop the Daggers from coming in. Their opponents, on the other hand, I mean, those, that Swift, Swift Thunderbird, not a bad start. Properly used, that can lead to Daggers being able to rip apart the Ducks and then basically win. But I think this will be a relatively short match. But at the same time, that's a question of whether or not the Thunderbird actually does its job. If it doesn't manage to get in, if the Ducks manage to avoid it, then it'll be very different. Not to mention the push going forward here from West Noth. They are getting, from 400 and Icons. Just gonna, yeah, the names. 400 and Icons pushing to the southeast, pushing recursion. And that is enough. Getting rid of already a couple daggers because, hey, that's what you do with ducks. They are also riot units. And thus we are seeing very quickly a scalpel switch because that's, you gotta have to. You need the skirmisher to be able to deal with the ducks, to be able to deal with the mace. And the Thunderbird not managing to find much mileage, and with the Flail up on top of that... Oh, right, of course, Flail. How did I forget that? Flail, best anti-air. We are going to be seeing not a whole lot of success for Google Frog's air strategy off the bat. Still, though, the Thunderbird going in for the hit. And it manages to get a few. Manages to stop the Mace from doing anything. Manages to get a couple of the Ducks on top of that. So the Flail not really getting much because of this, and the Mace and the Ducks forced back somewhat. And the Ducks managing to find a little bit of room, managing to get rid of at least one of the daggers, and the Scalpel's not able to kill all of them. So hey, dagger's going down. Not sure I'd say it's a win for the Northwest team, but it does at least apply some pressure, and they're, they are using that to expand, which is exactly what I want to see. 400 getting the Northern Expansion, setting up a few defenses as well, just to make sure. Not sure if they can have time for that, though, because with the Scalpel's coming up north, it's going to be a tricky hold. I don't see any daggers either. Scalpel, indeed, is the answer. 400 going for scalpels of their own to stop scalpels from Sortail, which is a bit tricky. It's going to come down to getting the drop, but that's all they really have to work with right now. And at this point, it will be recursions, <laughs> Recursion coming in first. Recursion's going to get a fair amount of damage onto these metal extractors. Not enough to let them pay for themselves. So one of the metal extractors down. The other one's still up. It still should be able to pay for itself in the meantime. But that damage being dealt is not quite enough. At this point, I would say that Northwest side, they do have a strong position. And on top of that, going Southwest with an Angler and a bunch of Ducks, really stopping any attempt at throwing another Thunderbird Strike on them, or at least trying to stop it as best as possible, if not afterwards. The question, of course, is how do you get in? Because they can't go over the hills here. I mean, they're kind of stuck. Now, granted, they might be able to stop this Crane from doing much. So that's something. That That is value. That is stopping an expansion over to the Southwest. At the same time, it's only revealing a couple of these units. The rest of these darts, they might be known because Google Frog, Google Frog does tend to build radar, but no. They are not known as they are underwater and the radar does not penetrate the water. So that is going to be a very nice surprise attack. Getting rid of a couple backline metal extractors possibly have done well getting rid of some of the power plants as well. It won't get rid of any factories. That would be asking for far too much. But, then again, considering that most of the air units are out on sorties, they're... No, they're coming back. No. The metal extractors go down, the power plants might go down, defenses might go down, but factories are going to be fine, and the ducks are going to die. This is a suicide mission. It was a very successful suicide mission, but ultimately, it ends in suicide. Which I suppose, that's a success for suicide missions. You killed yourself. Well done. You succeeded the mission. This one, however, with the daggers coming in here, there's nothing the ducks can do. Like I said, they know they're going to die. Still, two metal extractors and a power plant for four ducks. That slows down recursion and gives Westnoth a really strong north... Or, sorry, northwest. 
gives him a really strong metal lead. 28 to 15, right off the bat. And on top of that, get daggering out these scalpels, so right now Recursion doesn't have a whole lot of territory presence over the north side of the map entirely. Well, the northwest side, they are managing to find everything they need. The one thing they might not have, however, going forward is enough defenses against anything that comes in scalpel-wise. But the fact is, most of the force is air force. And there's anti-air that's been built up. I mean, not much of it right now, but you know, it has been built up from time to time. Although the fact that not a lot of it has been built up, the flail is up as defense in the back lines, but not a whole lot of static defense. It's very clear that the northwest side expects recursion to switch over to ground. They expect Google Frog to build bots or build vehicles of their own, and that's not happening. Google Frog's sticking with the air strategy. Remember, it's a team game, so resources can be shared between team members, and also... Fact switching is more expensive. It's like 33% more expensive than it used to be. 800 metal is not nothing. It's almost a minute and a half with one worker. Well, one caretaker, actually, with a commander. With a worker, it's three minutes, potentially, as opposed to two. So that extra minute is a huge deal. Or the amount of metal needed to make that not an extra minute is a huge deal. Either way, there's a lot that has to be worked with, and it's very clear that they're still confident this strategy is going to work, especially with this forward push over the western side of the map, getting rid of the conch, getting rid of everything it built up, and opening a clear path into the northwest base. And it looks like the northwest base is going to completely fall. There's nothing here to stop it. Everything that the northwest side has built has been pushed forward into the center. Nothing is at home to defend. The rally points are set up with nothing at home to defend. I don't think they're even aware. Are they even aware this is going to happen? They got radar coverage of this, but not much of a reaction in time. All these daggers coming in here. All these daggers are going to be... 13 daggers, they can get rid of basically anything. Icons, however, with the laser, that's something. The beam laser at least dissuades them from doing more than getting rid of one metal extractor. Hey, one metal extractor, that is fine. Like, one metal extractor will be at least something. Northwest side, they're getting low on economy. Despite that early push, they have not managed to sustain any forward economic presence, while at the same time, Recursion's just been able to rip apart everything. I mean, the fact is, there's been no anti-air. There's nothing that's been dealing with the Thunderbird. If something could possibly deal with the Thunderbird, then I could see there being a potential in. But right now, the Northwest side cannot touch that, and as a result, they've been opened up. I'm not sure there's anything they can do at this point, because they haven't been building up anti-air. They have some economy. They can they can invest the money into it, and they do have hacksaws as well to stop the Ravens. But really, they don't have any anti-air units being built up. They're far more concerned about these daggers, which, admittedly, I can kind of see why, but we're also not seeing the build-up on the factory. Like, really? I don't know why that's not being assist-builded. Or there's no caretakers. Like, West North is starting to excess, despite the fact that they have way less economy. Recursion's also accessing, but they have more economy to work with, and overall, Recursion, they have the money. Like, metal used is still pretty high, but at this point, it doesn't matter that they're accessing. They're not accessing as much as West North. Or is northwest side. And clearly, 400 and Icons are relying on the northeast being reasonably open, but they're also losing that, and not rebuilding it either. Still, Anglers are up. That is what they need. The Anglers are up, the Maces are up, some defenses are up in case more assaults happen. And it's just a matter of getting the workers up to rebuild these metal extractors. Like, I say it all the time. The difference between a good player and a great player is that a great player will constantly and rapidly rebuild metal extractors that are lost. Whereas a good player will build them and expand quickly, but then let them stay dead. And that's exactly what 400 is doing. <sighs> at any rate, 400 should at least be able to get some mileage if they run into some daggers. Not sure that's going to happen, though, with the scalpels coming in. Because with the scalpels coming in, this is going to be a bit tricky. It's kind of require a lot of attention. With the scalpels in here, I mean, the maces are dead. The flails are probably dead. The daggers are not going to run in here either, because bear in mind, this is well known. Like, this can be spotted. There's enough vision on Recursion's side. They know exactly where Westnoth's forces are. The same cannot be, true, cannot be said the other way around. The thing is, Google Frog loves building radar. They absolutely must have radar everywhere. They want to know, and we can see right here, Google Frog's radar's all over the place. Google Frog loves their radar. And for good reason. It lets you see what's going on. Now, it's an extremely powerful tool. When in this game, it's easy to stop units from scouting. 
the radar just bypasses all of that. So yeah, despite the early early rushes from Northwest and a lot of damage dealt as a result, Recursion is clearly in the lead. Now, they have a clear unit value advantage. They have a not so clear metal advantage. It's, a, it's an advantage, but it's not as huge. Largely just that the Northwest side has not managed to maintain their army. But they've been able to build it just fine. And now they lost that flail for basically nothing. I Where the heck is... Where are they focused? Oh, not just now focused on the main base. But yeah, they were not focused on that at all. I think largely the northwest side is focused on building the northeast. Getting that set up. Making that their main base. Despite the fact that all their production is over to the northwest and there's not much stopping it from being assaulted. Because we can see, you know, the daggers coming in here, they're getting torn to pieces. They managed to get rid of the hacksaw, but that's where it came in. And yeah, I don't want three-way tiebreak. Wait, three-way tiebreak? What? Why is there a three-way tiebreak? No, this would be a two-way tiebreak. Mackie and Ophelius versus Sortel and Googlefrog would be the tiebreak. If Sortel and Googlefrog win this, they have to beat Mackie and Ophelius. Assuming that Mackie and Ophelius beat Tech Omnu and Mini Shadowstorm. But at any rate. <sighs> at any rate, I hope we don't need to have a lot of tiebreakers, because really, I just... <sighs> just get to the bracket stage. Like, if we need a tiebreaker, just use that as part of the seeding to the bracket stage or something. Like, we... No. Maybe do the tiebreaker while the upper bracket is done, because the upper bracket is clear. Like, nothing is going to change for upper bracket. This is for a lower bracket. But, I don't know. Just find something to make it quick. At any rate, the northwest side, 400 Nikens is at least getting a pretty strong push in, but the scalpels are there. They exist. They're managing to get all the damage in. And that's... That on top of the Grizzlies coming on... Coming online... That's a possibility, but it's still really tough. The thing is, these are not being rebuilt, and there's nothing to rebuild them. There's hardly any workers on that side. I don't think there's any, actually. There's one. There's one quill that's assist building. And now getting some reclaim, but it's like, why aren't you building over here? Why aren't you getting the caretakers? Why aren't you just setting up? You still have this territory more or less under your control. Just take it back. Like I said, it's, it's easy to get intimidated. And I think that's what's going on. It's really easy to look at something like this, to look at the way that a match is going, look at how your opponents are damaging your expansion's economy, and think, oh crap, I can't make that work. No, you can't. If this is alive for 20 seconds, it pays for itself. This is a 3.2 metal extractor. It doesn't need to even be alive for the 35 seconds that most two value metal extractors need to be alive for. It needs to be alive for a little over 20, and then you're good. 25, to be precise, but actually no, 3.2 is even less than that. It's, yeah, a little over 20. That's easy. This fight here is going to take a little over 20 seconds. If that middle extractor was rebuilt, it would have paid for itself by now and been actually providing profit for the Northwest team. Not to mention all the reclaim around and the fact that the metal extractor itself is reclaimable. So, really, it's just 60 metal, not 75. And now the Thunderbird's down. This is the opening. This does mean the Grizzly's dead, but that is the exact opening that was needed for the Northwest side. With the Thunderbird down... Ah, oh, but another Thunderbird up. Really... More, I would have liked to see more anti-air coming out there, like, early on in the game. I would have liked to see more anti-air starting out. I would have liked to see, obviously, I really want to see more experience. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting frustrated. This is like, these two metal extractors are here. They could be taken. It's too late now, but there was a short period where they would have been alive for about a minute or so. That would have been a good 40 seconds of having actual income. That would have been about 120 metal right there. No, sorry, 240 metal for the both of them. It wouldn't have been bad. But yeah, that wasn't done. And also, these weren't rebuilt for a while. It's just overall, small things here and there. And yeah, Farnard's going to do that. So, looks like Sortail and Googlefrog are going to win this. Which means, I'm not going to cover the tiebreaker. Forget it. I'm doing the... I'm going to... We can get the bracket going because the tiebreaker does not affect what's going on with the top seed. The top seeds are Go Golden, Kingstaff versus Anir and Saniac. So, they're... 
I think the way it works, I should double check. Maybe not. Maybe it does require that it's set up. Damn it. <sighs> Shoot, it does. It's not the way that... The way Akinem normally does it, the bottom two would be in the lower bracket immediately, and the top two would be just in the upper bracket. And essentially just have the winner's finals and then lower... Some stuff in the lower bracket to sort things out, but essentially it'd be as if the two players at the bottom lost their first two matches immediately. That's usually the way it's done, but this is now automated by challenge, which means the challenge is going to be setting it up. So unless unless those two players are given auto losses to line up with the way things are normally done, that's not going to happen. And now, now we've got three tiebreakers. It's going to spend so much time. No, I'm not happy about this. I I really... I don't know. Kind of frustrated, that's all. Well, anyway, like I said, tiebreakers are going to be coming up, so that's the thing. Can't say I'm happy about that, considering that we're going to add that onto the bracket, so. I don't know. <sighs> Surprisingly, Macchio, Phyllis, Takamune, and Me Shadow Storm is still going on. I mean, the tiebreaker is inevitable anyway, because 400 and Icons, they had the standing advantage. So now they're even with Macchio, sorry, now they're even with Surtail and Google Frog. Yeah. Alcrim is not happy about this either. Like, I don't know. Sometimes this happens with Round Robin, so I don't really like Round Robin overall. Although I guess with Swiss this could happen as well. Hmm. And your Insaniac's match, however, is finished, so that, the group stage is done. It's just now tiebreakers. Unless, no, never mind, no, no, no. Challenge is going to handle this automatically. And Mac Interfilius advanced with Australian Google Frog. 400 icons? No, because of tiebreakers? The heck? Okay, so Challenge says no. I guess it's a question of who they won or lost against, because I I don't really understand the logic here. But yeah, that's how this is apparently going. Or not. I don't know. Damn it, I hate when things take longer than they have to. Really? Because... Okay, I don't know what's happening. Because challenge... Oh! Oh, maybe it's just that set to advance. I don't know what this means. I don't know how this works. All I know is that I'm going to be here for a while. Whatever. I'm just going to take a small break until we work out what's going on. And then be back afterwards. I just realized... Oh, I'm doing such a... Damn it. It's supposed to be five. It was supposed to be... Forget it. We'll go into a break.